Okay, 8.1, the sine law. So what we're looking at in this unit is looking at being able to solve triangles that aren't necessarily right triangles. So we have to be introduced to different laws, and they were developed from the right triangles within non-right triangles. Enough on that note. Let's look at the sine law that we use for non-right triangles. Now, not all triangles are right triangles. So sine law was created to be able to use for non-right triangles. In particular, in grade 10, we look at acute triangles, that means all angles less than 90 degrees, that have two angles and any side, or two sides and one angle, opposite to a given side presented to us. So basically, you ha the triangles have to have two angles and any side given, or two sides and one angle opposite to the given side. So let's look at ABC. Sine A over A is equal to sine B over B, which is equal to sine C over C. What that means is that given this, information. If we have no angle A, we can find side A. If we, uh, or we can uh, use the, sorry, if we know angle A and side A, we can use that to solve for something else. And I'm going to show you examples of that using sine law in this section. Now, we could also flip the case around and put the signs on the bottom. It doesn't really matter which one is which, folks, because ultimately we're going to get the answer that we need to be able to solve this problem. Now note, big A is here. Big A looks over little a. So this triangle is called ABC. This is big BC side or little a. Remember that this triangle is called ABC, so if this side is called AB, the little side is known as C. Big AC, little, little, the little letter known is B, little b. Again, big B looks over little b. Big C looks over little c, and big A looks over little a. And we use this formula, sine law, when we have, again, two angles and any side presented to us, or two sides and one angle opposite to a given side. So we're going to show you that right now. Example 1, you're asked to calculate the length of a side A to one decimal place. So here is our measurements and notice here that you have the information given to you. We have two angles and one side. Because we have that we use sine law. So we need side A. Well, to know side A, we need angle A. Do we have it? No, but we can find angle A. In fact, angle A is equal to 180 minus 63 minus 47. That means angle A is 70 degrees. We use SATT, sum of the angles in a triangle theorem, to solve for psi, the angle. When we know two angles, we can find the third. So. What are we going to do with this? We're going to use angle A to solve. Sine A over A is equal to sine B over B is equal to sine C over C. That's your sine law formula. Now fill in the information that we need or we're required to find. Sine A sine 70 over A is equal to sine 47 over 18. And that's B, folks. We don't need C, we don't even need it, so to be honest, we don't even include it. Knowing what we know here, what are we going to do with this? That's right, folks, we're going to cross multiply. Turns out that 18 sine 70 divided by sine... Now, some of you might be wondering, why is this the case? So let's go over this again just one more time. Okay, we're just going to go over this one more time. So I'm going to just show you. When you cross multiply, you would get 18 sine 70 on 
the one side, the left side, and on the other side we will have A times sine 47. Now what we're going to do is we need to get A by itself. So we're going to take sine 47 and divide it to the other side so we're actually dividing this by sine 47 and that's how we solve for A. Once we do that we will get the answer for A. Now some of you might be wondering, well what if I want to use the formula the other way? So A over sine 70 equals 18 over sine 47 and guess what? When you cross multiply you will also get the same value. Irregardless of which method you use, guess what folks, your answer will be 23.1276 meters. Now we're going to reduce it to one decimal place. What does that mean? Well, our final, final answer is going to be 23.1 millimeters. And that's our answer. 23.1 millimeters. All right, let's keep moving forwards. Example number two. We need to solve now for given a triangle DST with angles D equals 47, little d equals 78, and S equals 107, or sorry, 106 centimeters, find angle S. The other part, we're going to have example three on this page, and we have a question that involves a Bermuda Triangle and we have a diagram given to us. So these are two questions. In the first one there's no diagram and the second one there is. So now we have to solve. We're going to find angle S in the first one. What are you given? Well let's draw the triangle out. DST we have D and side D we have angle S sorry angle S right here no, we need angle S, but we have side S. So, what are we going to use? Well, we're given two sides and an angle that's opposite that. So, two sides here and here, and an angle opposite one of the given sides, just like that. So, we need to solve for S. How are we going to do that? Well, sine for S over 106 is equal to sine 47 over 78. So we need the angle this time. And you know that whenever we need to do an angle we have to use inverse. So we're going to cross multiply first 106 sine 47 over 78 and now we're going to take the sine inverse of that function or of that equation or that solution right there. Okay, the sine inverse of that, that's what we're doing here and we're going to find that value. So now we would touch our calculator. Notice that we're not really touching the calculator any time within the question. We could actually mathematically it's wrong to actually type this in your calculator, the sine 47 for example and get a number until after. It is wrong to type it within the question and you really should do it after you have isolated for the variable. So we isolated for S and we got 83.6635 degrees. Now round it to four decimal places until the very, very end, folks. Example in this case is we have to round it to four anyways. Example number three. Determine the perimeter of the Bermuda Triangle to the nearest hundredth of a kilometer. Now it says look at page 400 and that would be with respect to the textbook we have. To be honest, folks, you don't really need this piece because it doesn't pertain to what we're actually doing. Here is an example of a triangle that could be the Bermuda Triangle. So we need to have letters, so we're going to put B, T, Bermuda, B for Bermuda, T for triangle, and E for exists. So that the and what we're given here are two angles and a side. Are we allowed to use sine law? The answer is yes, because we're given any two angles and any side, doesn't matter where it is, okay, you can automatically use it to solve. Here we have the two angles. We need this angle here to solve with this side. So using SATT, we need to find angle T, 
and that equals 56 degrees because of SATT. And once we find that, we can use sine 56 over 1600 is equal to sine 50 over B, which is equal to sine 74 over E. Now, what does perimeter mean? Remember, the perimeter is adding all the sides up together. So we actually need little b and little e, both of them. So we're going to solve for b using sine 56 over 1600. And we're going to use sine 56 over 1600 again to solve for little e. And we solve for b. We solve for e. So b first. And we're going to solve for e as well. Okay, cross multiply and solve, and you find out these values. So this is the values of the two. Now let's just look for a second and make sure we understand this. We know that angle T is 56 degrees. 56 degrees is the middle angle of the three angles given. So because it's the middle angle, that should be the middle side. That should be the middle length. Is it the middle length? Well, based on the information that was given to us, I would say yes, that is the middle length. The middle, there's an angle here and an angle here, so that is our middle length. So, what we need to do now is understand that across from angle 50, which is the smallest angle, should be the smallest side, and that is true here. And then across from the largest angle is going to be the largest side. The reason why that's true is because, think about it, in order to make a large side, you need a large angle. The larger the angle, the larger the side. The smaller the angle, the smaller the side. So let's move on forwards. We haven't finished this question yet. We need to now find the perimeter. So we take the perimeter and we add up all the sides that we discovered plus the original one that was given to us and yes we keep it to four decimal places and we add it together and we get 4,933.6123 so therefore because we started with words the perimeter of the Bermuda Triangle is 4,933.61 kilometers the reason why we rounded here it's because the question asked the nearest hundredth, which is two decimal places. All right, folks, that's the end of the sign law video. Take care. Have a numerical day.